Welcome to another session of Social Studies. Today's lesson is ro on rotation and revolution. These are the two movements that the Earth makes. Before we start today's lesson, we're going to go over our objectives. So by this end of this lesson, you should be able to answer or accomplish these items that I'm going to list on the PowerPoint at this time. We're going to define the terms rotation and revolution. We're going to examine three results of rotation and revolution. So we're going to examine three results of each one. The vocabulary words that we are going to see during this lesson, rotation, revolution, and orbit. So before we begin, I need you to watch this video that I'm going to display on the screen at this time. And you could take down some short notes if you want to or some pointers, but I still will reinforce what the video is going to show you. The Earth and its movements. The Earth is the third planet from the Sun. And it has a unique characteristic that no other planet we know has. It's the only one that has life on it. Life of all types, plants, animals. Its average temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, and, be and because our planet also our planet also has water and an atmosphere, it is the perfect place for life. Like other planets of the solar system, the Earth moves in two different ways. One is called rotation, and the other is called revolution. Rotation is the movement of the Earth on its own axis. Rotate means to turn, so the Earth turns around a slightly inclined imaginary line that joins the two poles called the axis. Do you know how long it takes to make a complete turn? It takes 24 hours to make one rotation. Think about it for a second. One day Day and night together lasts 24 hours too. So the movement of rotation causes day and night. Interesting, right? Now let's see the movement of revolution. As you can see in the pictures, the Earth goes around the Sun in an elliptical orbit. That might sound a little strange, but if you look, you'll see it's simply the journey that the Earth makes around the Sun. Do you know how long it takes the Earth to make a complete revolution around the Sun? Well, it takes 365 days, exactly one year. This revolution movement is what makes the spring with its colorful flowers. The hot summer full of fun, the autumn, when leaves fall from the trees to the ground. And the cold and frosty winter. So let's remember the two kinds of movement that the Earth makes. There is rotation, which is the Earth turning around itself, causing day and night, which lasts exactly 24 hours, the same as a whole day. And there is revolution which is the Earth traveling around the Sun, which takes 365 days and causes the seasons. So now you know the movements of the Earth. Goodbye, everyone, and don't forget to subscribe to Happy Learning. Can anyone tell me what were the two movements that was discussed in that video just now? Now, one is already on your screen, rotation and revolution. Yes, 
they are the two movements of the earth. So we're going to look at rotation first. The earth rotation. Rotation is the spinning of the earth on its axis. And the earth spins from west to east. So it is counterclockwise, it spins, the opposite direction of a clock. The time it takes for the earth to rotate is 24 hours. So you can see on the screen for those persons who need to be familiar with their direction. This is north of top here, south is at the bottom. Remember, for you to remember west and east so you wouldn't get confused, you must spell the word we. So west will be to your left, and east will be to your right. So that's the direction with arrows pointing that the earth spins. Now, for every action, there is a reaction. So because the earth rotates, something happens. And we're gonna look at some of the rotation results. We get day and night. This is the easy one. As the earth rotates on its axis, Half of the earth faces the sun and half of the earth faces away from the sun. As you can see in this image here. So this is the sun. The sun rays are pointing on the earth. Now you can see Africa here is here, the continent Africa. It has day and around Asia, it's having night at this time based on this picture. The half of the earth that faces the sun will experience day. That's why it is very bright on the side. And the next half will experience night. You have the dark side right here. High and low tide. Now, some of you, you guys may not know that because the earth rotates, we get high and low tide. So let me explain how this happens. High and low tide is a result of gravitational pull between the sun and the moon. When the, rotate, when the earth rotates, the sun and moon pulls it. So as you can see in the picture here, it's almost like a tug of war. It is pulling the earth. So on the west and east side, you can see we're experiencing high tide and the north and south, we're experiencing low tide. I will further explain it in the next slide. One force is usually stronger than the other. As a result, we experience high and low tide. So if you look at this, slide here, you can see the sun and the moon pulling the earth. So that's how we have, it's almost like a tug of war. So that's how we have high and low tides. So I'll show you a picture of how high and low tide looks on planet earth, not from space that I showed you in the pre previous slide. So this is a picture of both this is the same scenery. One has high tide, which is the left. So this is those who are on the family island. One minute you're walking so far, and all of a sudden the tide comes and you wonder what happened, why the water is from your ankle, and next couple hours it is to your waist. Wind on earth comes from different direction. North at the top, south at the bottom, east to your right, west to your left. Different places would get stronger surges of wind as a result of the earth's speed of rotation. So we'll go to the next slide now. Revolution. The Earth's revolution. A revolution occurs as the Earth moves around the sun. Times for one revolution is 365 
and a quarter days or 8,766 hours. Now, I know you learned in primary school 365 days, but it actually, in reality, rotates 365 days in a quarter, and I will show you how they get this day on the next slide. Every four years, we get an extra day, which is found in January. It is called a leap year. So I'll give you one minute for those person who want to take down a little short notes. Okay, how do we get this extra day? We said that every four years is a leap year. February has 29 days because of this. So let's see what happens. We have 365 and a quarter days the first year, 365 and a quarter days the second year, 365 and a quarter days the third year, 365 and a quarter days the fourth year. Now, the quart, we add them up, you know, and maths or quarts give you a whole. So that's how we get the extra day right here. As a result of revolution, we have seasons. Now my favorite season is Christmas, winter, because that's my birthday season. Now, I don't know about you, but you can tell me your favorite season. There you go, let's put it in the box. That's for interaction, but my favorite season is winter. Now let's look at the result of revolution. The effects of revolution causes very varying length of days and nights. So you notice sometimes you see that the days are longer and the nights are shorter. So we're gonna go through that. In December, the sun is directly over the Tropic of Capricorn. So this causes us to have shorter days and longer nights. So you get to sleep in longer. The length of days and nights in June, the sun is directly over the Tropic of Cancer. This leads to longer days and shorter nights. So that means you can shop later. Um, dark will be falling around seven, eight o'clock. Let's go through our assignment now. So let's take a, I'll give you a minute to get your pencil and paper so we can go through the assignment. Okay, please let me know when you're done.
Okay, one more minute for those person who have to catch up. Starting from 60 seconds, I'm coming down. Okay, everyone should be done by now. If you're not done, you can still take down the answers so that you'll be familiar with the answers for each question. So we're going over the first question. Question one has multiple sections. And before I even give the answers, if you notice here, the diagram gives you a hint to some of the questions. I will, when, as I read the question, I will show you what the hint is in the diagram. The first question is A, the Earth orbiting the moon. So do you see the Earth is orbiting the moon? So this is planet Earth here, and this is the moon. The moon is orbiting the Earth, not the Earth orbiting the moon. So the first question answer will be false. B, Earth revolving around the sun. So you remember again, look at the diagram. This is the sun here. This is the earth. The earth is moving around the sun. So B will be true. C, the sun revolves around the earth. You see the sun revolving around the earth? No, the sun is right here. Only the earth is revolving around the sun. So that will be false. D, the moon orbiting the earth. Again, that will be true. Again, I'll show you again on the PowerPoint. This is the Earth. This is the Moon. The Moon is revolving around the Earth. So that will be true. The Earth orbits the Sun. That is true. So that section two, four, six, you should have gotten six right. If you did not put the total or the six on that section, so if you got five over six, you'll put five over six. So let's go to question number two. This picture shows Earth's rotating. When the Earth makes one complete rotation on its axis, how much time has passed? Now we learned this throughout the lesson. Let's see, is it one year, one day, one month or 10 days? Let's see. One day is correct. Number three, day and night is caused by A, the earth revolving around the sun, B, the earth rotating around on its axis, C, the moon revolving around the earth, and D, the sun becomes hotter or colder. Uh, definitely, it's not D. So let's see, or the A, B, and C, which one is correct? If you put B, you are correct. Give yourself a pat on the back. Number four, what is the imaginary line called that is shown passing from the North and South Pole through the center of the Earth? Remember we did this at the beginning. Now, two of them are imaginary lines. Let's see the answer. D, axis is correct. And number five, even though I put it up, I'll read the question. What is the invisible path the Earth takes around the sun? It is orbit. So let's put your total. So the top section is out of six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's out of ten. Now those who got ten out of ten, put put your answer. And if you got ten out of ten, if you got nine, you could put it in. 
the chat or the Q&A. Those who got eight, those who got seven, you could put it in. Okay, and those who did not get, who got less than seven, you will catch up on the next slide. Around and around we go. Every second that you sit in the classroom, the Earth orbital motion carries us about 18 miles through space. Now, how many persons have ever been in a speeding car before? That's fast. But 20, 18 miles is a little slow. Your parents are pressing just a little gas and you're moving at a slow pace. 18 miles is not fast at all. So that's how fast the Earth is, orbital motion is. So let's play space Earth movement. We're gonna. Oh, round one. Now you have to tell me which one I should press. The Earth spins on its axis, rotation or revolution. Tell me which one to press. Rotation, revolution, rotation. Okay, let's try rotation. If you said rotation, you got it correct. Going around a large body. Rotation, revolution. Which one? I think we should go with rotation again. Okay, let me try the opposite. Now, if I get it wrong, I'll feel very bad. Oh, revolution, we on a roll. Question three, what is 24 hours? Rotation or revolution? My money is on rotation. Anyone else think it's rotation? Okay, let's try rotation. Question four, causes of the earth seasons. Causes the earth seasons, rotation or revolution? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Put in your answers before I press it. Rotation or revolution? Which one do you think should be it? Seasons, my money's on revolution. We are on a roll. Number five, creates a year. Rotation or revolution? Okay, let's see what the answer is. Yes, revolution. The moon goes around the earth, rotation or revolution. Now this one, I'm not gonna press. I'm gonna see what your answers the most and I'll press it and see if you got it right or wrong. Let's see. Which one you think? I'm gonna count the most. Rotation or revolution? Now it's up to you. Now we were on a roll just now. Now I need a six out of six. So let me count it up. One more minute to key in your answers. It looks like rotation based on your answers. Let's see, let's see, let's see. 30 seconds, 29, 
Okay, I'm going to key in. I'm scared. Got me nervous, guys. It's a rotational revolution. Which one? Which one? It is revolution. Remember, revolving is going around an object, complete motion around an object. Now, I may have not counted them all fast enough. Revolution may, may have had the most, but I was trying to count fast. And that's why I clicked on rotation. I wanted you to decide what the answer is. So let's move on to round two. Okay, round two, let's go. Okay, what is the planet doing in figure one? This is figure one here, rotating or revolving. Put your answers in. Okay, rotating is correct. Figure two, this is figure two, is the earth rotating or revolving? Put in your answer. Revolution. Now, my name is Mrs. Woodside. It was my pleasure teaching you this morning. Also, if you want any reinforcements, you can look at the site where you sign in. We have some resource kits where you have activities, videos, and PowerPoint presentation to reinforce what was taught. It is my pleasure on behalf of myself and Ms. Brown Evans. Thank you for signing in. Welcome to Persuasive Writing. My name is Miss Barrow. Today, we will focus on the structure of persuasive writing and how to use emotion in your writing to persuade. First, let's have a look at the lesson objectives. After watching this lesson, you will be able to explain the purpose of persuasive writing, use emotion to persuade the audience, and construct a sentence hook, statement of opinion, reason, and closing sentence for persuasive writing. First, let's watch this video on persuasive writing. Persuasive writing is a type of opinion writing. Your opinion is what you think, feel, or believe about something. To persuade means to convince. When we persuade someone, we want to convince them of something. People use persuasive writing to stand for or against an issue. The writer's job is to convince the audience to believe something or to take action. Media used to convince the audience include the radio, television commercials, newspapers, magazines, and much more can be used to persuade your audience. The writer may wish to persuade the audience in one of three ways, emotions, character, and reason. Today, we will focus our attention on persuasion through emotional appeal. Let's have a look at this video. A 
In persuasive writing, emotional appeal is the use of emotion to persuade. The purpose for emotional appeal is to get the audience to listen with their feelings and not the mind. This convinces them to make a decision. Some phrases or words used to evoke emotions are I think, I believe, amazing, ecstatic, dangerous, crushed, beautiful, and foolish. These examples and many more may evoke emotions such as pity, fear, anger, and excitement, which can cause your audience to share the same view and take action. To appeal to animal lovers, the writer may use pity to evoke compassion to convince the audience to adopt a dog. The fear of danger to life, health, or property may convince you not to leave a child in the car. Anger appeal can make the audience want to take action, such as cleaning up the environment. Or excitement appeal, which can make you want to spend some money. So whether you're writing for a friend, your teacher, a parent, or even a complete stranger, it's important to know your audience so that you can write to appeal to their emotions. A good persuasive essay has a hook, statement of opinion, reason, and concluding sentence. Sentence hooks are used to grab the reader's attention. Let's have a look at some examples. The first is feeling or emotion. Excessive homework can lead to burnt out students. You can also start with questions. Have you ever thought about why we have homework? What's the point? And then there's repetition. No, no, no! Homework is stressful and should not be given on weekends. Does this look familiar? On a mat appear. Ring! The bell ringing signals that school is dismissed, but it sucks because I'm rushing home to do homework. You can also use a hyperbole. Just thinking about homework on weekends makes my brain explode. Or even a metaphor. Education is your passport to the future. Let's play Name That Hook. This is where you get to determine the type of sentence hook used. Identify whether it's a simile, repetition, hyperbole, question, metaphor, or an onomatopoeia. Here's our prompt. Should children be allowed to drive cars? Would you put your precious life in the hands of a clueless five-year-old driver? Choose the answer from the bottom. Is it a simile, repetition, hyperbole, question, metaphor, or an onomatopoeia. If you said that the sentence hook is a question, awesome job! Crash! Boom! Bam! That's what Max heard after he allowed his 12-year-old behind the wheel of his brand new Mercedes-Benz. Alright, select your answer. I bet you said onomatopoeia. Awesome job. How about this one? Placing car keys in a child's hands 
is like playing with fire. What's the answer? Yes, a simile. Here's the next one. No, no, no. Letting children drive vehicles on the streets is absolutely insane. Come on, what's the answer? Yes, repetition. Good job. How about this? Minus swerving down the streets of Nassau is pure hell. Our answer? Metaphor. Let's try one more. The world will end if kids are allowed to drive behind the wheel of a car. Yes, the answer is hyperbole. In persuasive writing, after the sentence hook comes the statement of opinion. A statement of opinion is when the writer takes a stance for or against something. In other words, the writer gives their point of view on the subject. Let's take a look at some examples. I think it's dangerous to teach a nine-year-old to cook. In this example, the writer is taking a stance against children cooking in the kitchen. Summer camps should be mandatory for bullies. Again, the writer is taking a stance against bullying. And the last one, I believe it is important for students to have a break from school. The writer is taking a stance for breaks for students. Here's where you get to determine if the sentence is for or against something. If you think this sentence is for something, you will put your thumbs up. If not, thumbs down if you think it's against. Here's the first sentence and it's about junk food in school. The time has come to stop junk food from being sold in school. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Yes thumbs down. You have taken a stance against junk food. Good job. Let's take a stance for prefect nomination. Rihanna will make a great president for the prefect club. Vote for Riri. Is the sentence taking a stance for or against? Thumbs up. Yes, it's for. Here's an interesting one. Texting and driving. Texting while driving should be against the law. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Indeed, thumbs down. Take a stance against texting and driving. Great job. Let's look at citizenship. Citizenship should be a legal right for everyone born in the Bahamas. What stance does this writer take? Yes, for citizenship. Once you've taken your stance, it's important to give your reasons as to why you agree or disagree with something. Your reason can be compassion-based. If the kittens do not have food to eat, they will starve. You don't want the kitty to starve, do you? Of course not. That's an emotional reason. Another reason is the appeal of fair. Installing security bars will make sure that you are safe from criminals when you go to work. Let's say you're trying to persuade someone to purchase a product. In this case, you can use the appeal of vanity. Using head and shoulder shampoo will make your hair shiny and healthy. This gives flattery to win the customer over to purchase the product. 
Now you will get a chance to practice writing a sentence using opinionated reasons. The topic given is junk food in schools. Write a sentence to say why you would disagree with junk food in schools. Pause the video and start now. When you are done, press play. Welcome back. I'm sure that you did a great job. Here's my sentence. I am certain that eating junk food makes you look unattractive. Let's try the next sentence. You will now write a sentence stating why you would be in favor of having cell phones in the classroom. Start now. Welcome back. Here's my sentence. I believe cell phones help to make learning more interesting. This time, write a sentence against smoking. Remember, use an opinion. Stop the video and start now. When you're done, press play. Was your reason similar to mine? Everyone knows that smoking makes you look old fast. The final piece of the puzzle is making sure that you have a strong closing sentence. This confirms your stance or point of view. It can help to convince your audience to support a cause or to take action. Here's an example. This supports a cause. Please support my soccer team by sponsoring us to travel for competition. Let's look at another example. If you want to remain safe on the streets of Nassau, buckle up. Here, the writer makes a final attempt to convince drivers and passengers to wear their seatbelts for safety. Let's wrap up. Remember that persuasive writing may be used to convince someone to believe what you believe or to take action. A strong persuasive piece should have a sentence hook, statement of opinion, reasons, and a concluding sentence to support your view. That's all for now. See you next week for another lesson on persuasive writing. Bye-bye.